Good evening, I'm John Carter and welcome to Poland Daily. Janusz Wojciechowski from the Polish Law and Justice Party received a positive review after a second hearing before MEPs as a candidate for the position of EU Commissioner for Agriculture. The vote on the new team for the European Commission will take place during a European Parliament session on October the 23rd. The Polish candidate for Commissioner for Agriculture stated during a press conference that he's happy with the anonymous support of all political groups of the European Parliament. A green light from the Agricultural Commission means that Wojciechowski will join more than 20 other candidates who have also received positive recommendations from the European Parliament. The vote on the new team for the European Commission will take place at the plenary session of the European Parliament in Strasbourg on October 23rd. During the second hearing before members of the European Parliament, Janusz Wojciechowski said his priorities will be the equalization of agricultural benefits, limiting bureaucracy and straightening of European agriculture in world markets. There are only five days left before the end of the election campaign, but, according to political commentators, the Law and Justice Party have played their cards better than the opposition. However, we won't know the victor for sure until the Polish parliamentary elections take place on October the 13th. According to the latest survey conducted by IBRIS, the Law and Justice would get 45.1% of the votes, while Civic Coalition would get 25%. The left wing would poll 12.6% and the Cookies 15 movement 5.6%. The Confederation would not cross the electoral threshold with nearly 4% of support. There are only a few days left before the Polish parliamentary elections. Today, the Civic Coalition candidate for the Prime Minister of Poland, Małgorzata Kidawa Błońska, met with teachers on the Teachers Gala. Every person in our country is a free man, so he can vote for whoever he wants to. Mr. Wałęsa is a free man and he can make his own decisions, and he can vote for whoever he wants to. This is democracy. The leader of the Law and Justice Party met with the Warsaw inhabitants today. The Law and Justice Party won credibility. The campaign promises have been fulfilled for the first time in history after 1989. What's more, the promises made after the elections have been fulfilled as well. According to publicists, the election campaign is not as brutal as initially expected. They admit that the campaign of the Law and Justice Party is much more professional, while Civic Platform have made the same mistakes as in the past. This is also caricatural. The campaign is based on stereotypes on the one hand, but on the other, the atom bombs, which we expected, did not emerge. Today was the last day for submitting applications for enrolling in the voters' list outside your place of residence in Poland. You can still obtain a certificate, the right to vote in your place of residence, until October 11th. Last Sunday, Lech Wałęsa was the honorary guest of the Civic Coalition's election convention. Today, he stated on his Facebook wall that he would not vote for the Civic Coalition and passed his support to the leader of the People's Party, Władysław Koszyniak-Kamysz. The post was quickly deleted from the profile of the former president, which may suggest that this is not his last change of heart. In view of the results of various recent election polls presented, I am publicly asking Civic Coalition to release me from my given public words that I will vote for Civic Coalition. I want to support Koshinyak Kamish. I can't imagine such a talented politician like Koshinyak Kamish, neither the village people from his organization not having a place in parliament. What did this Kaczynski lead to with his manipulation lies breaking the law? Moral topics preached here only obscure this perfidious game. In my opinion, this is a group of non-believers practicing. Once again, I'm asking you, countrymen, listen to me, save Poland's development. Move these dangerous people away from decision-making. Today was the second day of the 590 Economic Congress in Yashonka near the city of Zeshov. The main guest was Polish Prime Minister Mateusz Morawiecki, who spoke at length about Poland's swift economic development, which has convinced him that large numbers of Poles who left Poland in the last decade will now choose to return home. Our reporter, Magosjata Schultz, has more. Today, everything was about uh, the speech of Prime Minister of Poland, uh, who spoke about a very fast growth, economical growth of Poland, as well as spoke to Polonia, Polish diaspora, Polish people who live outside of Poland, but many of them are returning. Prime Minister 
addressed these words directly to Dan, saying that he is very happy and glad that some of returning from Ireland, England and other countries. Poland can pride itself on having one of the biggest economic growths in the world. According to the International Monetary Fund, we are one of the 22 economically strongest countries in the world. According to the European Commission, we are closing the tax gap faster than any other country. We are the first to firmly raise the issue of tax havens. Today, I'm very happy to see that the entire European Union speaks our language, saying that yes, tax havens are wrong and we need to deal with them. The Parliamentary Commission investigating VAT fraud has calculated that the Polish state lost 250 billion zloty in VAT revenue between 2007 and 2015 in VAT carousals. Prime Minister Mateusz Morawiecki has managed to decrease the so-called VAT gap from around 25% in 2015 to around 10%. The Polish Prime Minister has long argued that measures against VAT fraud need to be taken at an EU level. And now the Polish Stop VAT Carousal.pl campaign is putting up billboards in London, Berlin, Brussels and Madrid to inform the European public about the problem. With money. The stop.carousel.pl campaign is now also releasing an informational video to encourage citizens of EU states to demand action to be taken against VAT carousels. In the video, they warn that terrorist organizations earn 420 million euro every year from VAT fraud. Because as documents from Afghanistan and Italy now show us, a lot of that money is also going into terrorist groups to fund the kidnap and murder of innocent people. Let me tell you what they've done in Poland probably the best republic in Europe. In 2016, 27%, nearly 10 billion euros, Polish taxpayers' money was being creamed off through VAT fraud every year. Since then, the Minister of Finance, Mateusz Morawiecki, has halved that rate. Morawiecki's offensive against the scammers was absolutely ruthless. He mobilized an army of programmers, lawyers, and accountants who developed algorithms to smoke out the crime. Working with the independent sector, a new standard audit system was provided which enabled information to flow directly from entrepreneurs to authorities. If something was wrong with the transaction tax in a deal, the entrepreneur would be notified via text and the deal would be closed down. The scammers packed their bags and ran. Thank you very much for joining me here this evening at Poland Daily. I'm John Carter. Stay tuned after the break for Poland Daily Weather. It's followed by the business, then it's the culture, history and finally the travel. Hello and welcome to Poland Daily Weather. The forecast for tonight calls for showers across Poland. The only cities that can expect cloudy and partly cloudy skies will be Rzeszów and Zielona Góra. The temperatures tonight will vary from 8 to 11 degrees. Tomorrow, we can expect showers in the western and central regions of Poland and temperatures of 11 to 13 degrees. On the southern and eastern coast and in the city of Bydgoszcz, we can expect partly cloudy skies and a temperature of 9 to 13 degrees. The next three days will bring showers on Thursday and Friday to the central and western regions of Poland. But by Saturday, the weather should clear up and we can expect a great start to the weekend with partly cloudy skies and higher temperatures varying from 14 to 19 degrees. That is all for now. I invite you to stay with us and to join us later on for Poland Daily Business. Poland Daily Business Edition, and we are in Rzeszów, southeastern corner of the country, beautiful countryside, but we here for work, and we are at 590 um, convention that meets business people from big and small and medium-sized companies, innovative companies with government um, and uh, politicians. Uh, that's this annual event we hear, uh, and we talk to uh, Czesław Warsewicz, CEO of PKP Cargo, that's a railway company yes. uh, owned by Polish uh, state. Uh, and uh, let us 
say what happened with that company in the last four years mm -hmm. since uh, this government took charge of yeah. the country and um, because we knew that uh, We've heard that this company is going to be sold, it's not profitable, cannot reach uh, maturity, and maybe uh, the German railway will be kind enough to take care of the Polish railways. Uh, yeah, it's, of course, there's uh, many uh, things just to maybe present in uh, more uh, detail discuss about it. But if you talk about the PKP cargo, that we are uh, uh, the, um, I think uh, one of the companies in the uh, EU which is a stock exchange listed company, but uh, the, the state is a strategic investor. And you are just mentioned about the DB, DB Cargo. DB Cargo is a, a company which is subsidized by state and uh, uh, generate the losses. PKP Cargo is uh, not uh, subsidized by state. We 100% 100% our uh, turnover came from the market, and we uh, profitable company. Of course, the last four years for us it was very good uh, time for develop. For that time, we are uh, increase much higher, and we have more stable position. Especially, uh, we are so satisfied of the infrastructure investment because we are delivering a lot of aggregators and materials construction materials we are uh, we gen generate the profit uh, what are the key metrics from your point of view for the company how do you look at it uh, that's uh, uh, the hour the turnover is uh, around 1.2 billion euro we employ 23000 uh, uh, people we generate profit. Last year, uh, 2018, we generate a profit around uh, 500 million uh, euro. That's why quite uh, quite uh, good. We have 3.5 percent profitability. It's uh, generally stable uh, company with the big potential for develop. Uh, Especially, we are specialized in bulk materials transport. Also, our strategy uh, develop in the intermodal transportation. We be more uh, stronger position in this market. We want to use the, our location. We be um, a leader of transport between corridor north and south, and west and east. Uh, we invest in uh, uh, terminals. We are reorganize the structure. Uh, we be ambition of the one of the bigger player on the railway transport market in Europe. And uh, if you look at the growth of the uh, transportation, um, to what degree you can decide on this? Like, what are you mentioned that mm -hmm. your company is building the infrastructure in order to enable yeah, customers for, for, to store mm -hmm. their uh, mm -hmm. cargo and send it and ship it by mm -hmm. by your company. And um, the question yeah. is, uh, is this growth natural mm -hmm. because it is happening or it is somehow uh, stimulated by the PKP the cargo, and you are saying yeah. the customers come to us. It's better than elsewhere. Yeah, is it? I think we can see for the two for the two um, uh, vision. First of all, of course, the railway transport is a very close connecting with the develop of the uh, the economy for the GDP because the growth of the economy uh, stimulate growth of the transport. That's why the the bigger investment in infrastructure generate for us natural needs for transport, as I say, the aggregators and materials, uh, uh, construction materials. This is one thing. Another, of course, we'd like to be uh, looking for the new niche and uh, take over from our competitors, uh, transport. We're going to develop uh, in the two side. We could just follow the economy of the Polish economy, the Polish economy for the last three years 
last two years was very significant increase. We are, our GDP was increased around more than 4% yearly. For us, it's um, absolutely a perfect situation because this uh, growth increase uh, stimulate growth of our needs of transport and also our offer we try to prepare better offer for our clients um, answer for uh, for his needs that's why we uh, uh, try to feed for the uh, situation of the market but anyway the, the polish economy is a quite main factor for develop of our business and the usage of the Polish localization, which was used to be a curse of Poland, but right now is very good and key position and uh, also influences your company's growth on the yeah, matter absolutely. of preparing the perfect rod to fish in yeah. that water. Yeah, we are uh, locating crossroad between two corridors. First of all, of probably in the, our history, our location is uh, our advantage. That's why we have to use the natural position, but uh, uh, we are invest in the, the terminal infrastructure, we invest the product. That's why we want to use the, our location, but the most important for us is a seaport uh, factor, a seaport terminal. That's why we are interested to invest uh, on the seaport uh, transport uh, terminal. Investment. We hear about the new investments in the ports of Gdynia and yeah, Gdańsk. The only question is, will there be enough uh, rail? Uh, it's wheels. Yes, to, to, you know, to, to process that cargo and deliver it from the ports to the south to the final customers. Yeah, because the, the, the key point is for our business, uh, the seaport, because the seaport generate the movement. The, 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 that's why if we be invest in the seaport uh, um, infrastructure, we, our company will win for this investment. Of course, we are not responsible for that, but the, the Polish government, first the government in the history, looks for the port as a strategic uh, uh, strategic sector. We are so very satisfied of this uh, um, vision of them, and investment in the port Gdańsk, Gdynia, and Świnoujście for us is a very important. That's why so we are up probably will support this uh, activity. Thank you for mentioning that because we are also covering a lot uh, the issues with the support development, especially in this program. Czesław Warszewicz, uh, PKP Cargo CEO, was our guest, uh, sir. Thank you very much for Thank you. this conversation. And that was it for tonight's Poland Daily Business. Good evening and welcome to Poland Daily Business Weather. Tomorrow we can expect rain in the western and central regions of Poland and temperatures varying from 9 to 13 degrees. In the south and on the eastern coast and in the city of Bydgoszcz we can expect partly cloudy skies and temperatures varying from 9 to 13 degrees. In Europe we can expect rain in Paris, Bern, Prague and Oslo and temperatures of 6 to 19 degrees. Athens, Madrid and Ankara will see clear skies and temperatures of 23 to 28 degrees. The rest of the continent can expect to see partly cloudy skies and temperatures varying from 11 to 24 degrees. That is all for now. I thank you for joining us and I wish you all a very pleasant evening. Good day, everyone. My name is Maria Kondzielska, and this is Poland Daily Culture. Are you interested in theater? Our today's guests know everything about it. He is a director, drama writer, an essayist, and a music composer. He won two prestige drama prizes, and to add more, he's not even 30 years old. Ladies and gentlemen, Michał Zdunik. Thank you for coming. Thank you for the invitation. But before we learn more about him, 
Let's see some shots of his place. Samo tak gra? Samo? Jakieś obce widma. Odworują z nas sobie. Ten człowiek nie może zasiąść z nami przy stole. Mój ojciec go zabije. Już raz to zrobił. Milcz! Oktawian Alfons był człowiekiem czynów. Rozumiesz? Wielkich czynów! Nie bieg się, a co na mnie. Nie wiesz bowiem o swoim ojcu potworze rzeczy najstraszliwsze. Michał, you are a director, but also a drama writer and a music composer and an orchestra man. In which of those roles do you feel the best? <clears throat> it's hard to say because I, I can say that I choose theater because there, are, there is a kind of art which combine all of these activities, yes, in theater. When you create theater playing, you must uh, make a script, uh, you can compose music, you can, uh, I don't know, you can direct and, and also, yes, and I think that uh, I love in theater is, is the fact that you can uh, make things in all of this type of art, yes? And so I, you create a world of your own, with your own music, yes, with yes. your own... Scenario with my own directing uh, and it's hard to me say in which activity I, I feel the best, yes? I feel the best in, the, in this combining of, of art. And you cooperated with a famous avant-garde theatre, Garginica, which is also well known from a very different or unique interpretation of plays. And uh, you directed there two plays of Tadeusz Różewicz. Mm -hmm. How did it look like? And what was your interpretation? It was a very unique thing because uh, Gardzienice has their own uh, avant-garde, uh, anthropological kind of, of, of acting, yes? And, and let's uh, say a few words about Gardzienice, okay. just for our viewers. Um, so the actors usually li lived there, don't they? Yes, actors of Gardzienice lived there and actors of Gardzienice made ancient Greek dramas, yes? And they combine it with kind of anthropo anthropological reflection, yes? They collect uh, songs from the village and this, this kind of... So they compose the high art, like Greek drama, yes. with folk art, Yes, yes, folk they combine all the, these things. And uh, uh, Włodzimierz Staniewski, who is director of uh, Gardzienice, invited me because he created kind of project it's in Polish generator of generator of hope, in which he invited a few young directors to make a, a project here, and uh, I invite uh, my friends, uh, my actors' friends, my uh, uh, music friends, my uh, plastic friends to to make uh, Tadeusz Rzewicz play, and it was uh, very interesting to me that our place was completely different than style of Gardzienice. Yes. You staged Matka Haji, yes. so Mother Passing Away. Mother Departs is, oh, mother uh, departs is, is, is a translation. Okay. I see. And what was in, is, it's a difficult symbolic play. What was your interpretation? It was hard because Matka Haji is kind of Mother Departs, is kind of diary, kind of. Uh, <clears throat> kind of text which, uh, which which we see a man who who must confront himself with the death of of his mother yes and we we create kind of uh, monodram kind of kind of play which which one actor uh, we mean what one actor see uh, things from his mother uh, uh, flat from his mother from his mother fa uh, house and he made a reflection about for in in these things yes who was your main actor then oh it's my my friend Łukasz Borkowski who always was the was the main actor here and how did Gardzienica reacted to your play to your interpretation because it's, diff it's different usually I mean as I hear it's more 
traditional in a way than they are doing. They were curious. They were very interesting because they were. I think that uh, that was a great adventure for Gajenice to see a very another kind of, of theater kind of play. We we has uh, I create kind of psychological very very slow theater and Gajenice is very fast uh, non psychological theater. So it was very interesting for. for is it possible people. to see it anywhere? <laughs> Not now, yes, because it was kind of one one-time project. Yes, yes. We, we create, uh, we present it in Gardzienice, then in uh, Radomsko in Różewicz festival. So it was kind of uh, it, is, it, is, it is it is the past now. Do you recommend going to Gardzienice itself and see the place? Uh, yes, yes, because it's it's kind of when we go to Gardzienice, we can see in one evening free place. In the, there was kind of experienced like in ancient Greek, yes, when a uh, man goes to the theater, can see free plays in, in, in one evening, yes. And it, it's very interesting because we go uh, to the village, yes, uh, we go out of the civilization, civilization to the experience of the uh, clear theater, yes, clear, clear anthropological experience. So to our viewers of Poland Daily Culture, if anyone of you is interested in theatre, we recommend to go and visit Gardzienice, a unique place in Poland. And thank you for watching Poland Daily Culture. Behind me, the Powers Poblachen here in Warsaw. This is the home of Prince Joseph Poniatowski. His home, the place where he had his famous parties, also the war office. Who was Joseph Poniatowski? He was, in fact, a major figure in Polish history. Patriot, general, minister of war, sometime marshal of France. Join me in this episode of Poland Daily History, where we learn more about this remarkable Polish figure. So with the Battle of Leipzig, he, here we are, uh, Prince Poniatowski, a marshal of the French Empire at the Battle of Leipzig, um, in the aftermath of which he was effectively, he, he died. Uh, he, he died. He was, he was wounded several times uh, that day. Um, he received uh, uh, four shots. Uh, I mean, it was, it was counted because... I mean, have wounds when, when his body was found in the Elster. Because he drowned in the Elster. He, 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 ju he jumped on the, he, 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 was, he was probably uh, uh, mortally wounded at that time. Yes. And added to the fact that, uh, he, 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 uh, that, that, that he was weakened, I mean, he, he drowned very quickly. But he refused to uh, give, up the, give up the place, give up the battle. So he, Unlike the Bavarians who Traded Napole Na 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 Napoleon uh, in that very battle. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. So at, at that point, so he, he sort of died. A, I suppose he, for a soldier, he died a hero's death. 
on the battlefield. For him, it was, I say that for him, in a sense, it was good that he died at that time. I mean, because uh, uh, he, he didn't have to uh, uh, decide uh, in, the, in the aftermath whether to be loyal to the Russians, what to do. I mean, no problems of that type. And if we just... Because so some, of, some, of, some of the Napoleonic, many of them, some, many of the Napoleonic generals, officers, uh, started uh, military service in the Russian army. I mean, they are not to be blamed completely because if you are a soldier, that's your profession. I mean, what can well, you well, do? Exactly, yeah, and, and at that time, particularly, you know, mercen the concept of mercenary armies hadn't died out. I mean, the, 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 it was a slightly different approach to. Despite the, despite the fact that the Polish army uh, during um, uh, the uh, so-called um, constitutional period. 1815-1830, so till the uh, November uprising. It's called the constitutional period because the constitution was uh, was followed, was obeyed by the by the uh, of of course with uh, some exceptions, but generally the constitution was in 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 in, in force. So we call this period the constitutional period. In, in that time, the Polish army was called the Polish army. Yes, so that's many, interesting. So, uh, so it, it, it wasn't just the Polish corps of the Russian army, but it, it was the, the name was uh, preserved. And in fact, the, that was the only the, the, the only the only aspect of the uh, Polish political life during the uh, Duchy of Warsaw wh wh when where the name uh, Poland was used. That was the the Polish army, Wojsko Polskie, Księstwo Warszawskie. No, no. No uh, allusion uh, to, 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 to Poland, uh, because uh, some say that Napoleon didn't want to infuriate uh, the Tsar to, to, to use the name Poland, and that's why he chose uh, Duchy of Warsaw, which historically doesn't, doesn't have any sense. There was no, no, no such no, thing no. as Duchy of Warsaw. No, never, never. <laughs> purely, well, of course, at that time, Napoleon did sort of go around creating a few sort of states which had had no sort of historical basis. And normally, you know, putting members of his family in charge, which had limited success. But I was just wondering, you know, now we've reached this point, the, mm -hmm. the death of, of Poniatowski, as a historian, I mean, how would you sum up uh, Poniatowski's sort of life and contribution to sort of Poland and Polish history and uh, understanding of Poland? To me, uh, Paul, uh, Prince Joseph is the central figure of the Polish 19th century. Uh, but uh, not the 19th century taken literally, 18, uh, yeah. 1800, uh, but the, 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 the so-called Polish 19th century, so the time of partitions, uh, because he represents um, the uh, pro-Western option of, uh, uh, of our uh, uh, political dreams, uh, and he represents um, you know, those, those values who are uh, dear to, to Poles, Poles who are a nation uh, which um, was born uh, in a constant struggle against Russians, Turks, Swedes. I mean, of course, yeah. yeah. Uh, it, it's not. I mean, uh, we are not a Protestant nation for which such values as you know. Uh, um, industry, um, merchandise are important for us. Uh, it's all, spirit and, it's spirit and honor a, a which are important. You know, I think it's probably just worth mentioning that the order, which is still the highest order of, of Polish awards today, the Virtuti Militari, was in fact instigated and the first recipients were Poniatowski, Poniatowski and, 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 and Kosciuszko. I mean, that's mm -hmm. quite interesting. That, so he embodied this military spirit. Exactly, a very, very good point. Yeah, we didn't mention the, the Virtuti Militari, the oldest military, uh, the, 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 the Polish oldest military award. And, 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 and the most prominent one, of course, and the, and, and the most prestigious. I mean, there were guys who didn't deserve that. Brezhnev, for example, didn't deserve Virtuti well, Militari. We, we, I think every, uh, every, <laughs> day, I mean, every day, once you allow politicians to start <laughs> doling out honours. You get all sorts of, you know, I mean, our, our own queen at one point was, was forced to, to bestow an honour on Ceausescu, which, you know, was hastily, hastily well, revoked once he was dead, which rather, you know, that's um, a different thing. And of course, we have this marvellous, it's a reproduction, we have this marvellous statue of Prince Joseph Poniatowski here in the Port Senate, and, yeah, mm -hmm. outside the presidential palace. So yeah, the, but that, that's not the original place. No, it was, really, yes, it was the original place in front of the Saxon palace. Which is now absent. <laughs> which is now absent, as, as is the whole palace, of course, yes. But it's a marvellous, it's one of these great, you know, typical 
monument. He looks like a Roman leader. Exactly, with his, with his, his hand outstretched. With pointing his, out. Yes, yeah. with his sword on this magnificent Pointing out horse. the direction where to go. Exactly. It's also very symbolic. And uh, there it is here today in modern Poland, outside the President's Palace. This is the historical figure, actually, yeah. we're greeted with, uh, Józef Poniatowski. Yeah, it is important. If, if somebody... If somebody's uh, statue stands in front of the presidential palace, it means that <laughs> they are important for, uh, for our um, Polish uh, um, history. Uh, for uh, exactly, our... and, it's just, it's and it just underlines your point about him being in the, in the 19th century, this sort of symbol, this, this Polish figure uh, whom everybody remembers. But I think that's actually a marvelous point at which to, to end, to think, well, here we are. Even today, he is and with funny us. Funny thing, funny thing. Uh, um, uh, uh, for Poles, for many years, the one who represented the Napoleonic period in Poland wasn't Napoleon himself. Napoleon is less interesting for Poles than Prince Joseph. Of course. The first uh, uh, real academic biography of Napoleon in Polish was written in the 60s, 70s. and welcome to Poland Daily Travel. The next series of episodes will take you around Warsaw looking at what is perhaps the most captivating and surprising feature of Poland today. That is the Warsaw skyline. Warsaw has the sixth highest skyline in Europe. That's after Moscow, Paris, London, Istanbul, and Frankfurt. The Varso Center, under construction now, promises to be 310 meters, and at that height, the tallest skyscraper outside of Moscow in Europe. Tall buildings are nothing new for Warsaw, surprisingly enough. Not a lot of people know that the tallest skyscraper in Central Europe was in Warsaw in about 1910. That's the radio tower. And then there was the Prudential Insurance Building, now the Warsaw or the Warsaw Hotel. So Warsaw skyline has in recent years become one of the most impressive in Europe. And it's continuing to rise. The Warsaw Tower will be marginally higher at 310 meters than the Shard in London. So we are going to go from the old to the new over the next series of episodes. And we'll also take a trip around the Palace of Culture. That iconic landmark, which was a present from the Soviet Union to the people of Warsaw. Actually more like an offer you couldn't refuse. So sit back and come along. We'll try to show you something constructive, entertaining, and informative. I suppose we can build on that. So it's Poland Daily, and we're looking at the Warsaw skyline. Come along. Hello, everybody, and welcome back. Arthur and I are now standing in front of the Warsaw Tower. You can get a good view of it from here. We couldn't even go inside of it if we wanted to, because as you can see, still under construction. Arthur, we've talked about it before. How tall is it going to be? 310 meters. And not a penny more. Not a penny less. That's most important. <laughs> because if it was 80 centimeters smaller, then the right. shard in London shard. would have exactly the same height. The so shard. this is how under construction like there is accent. European highest skyscraper behind us. You cannot enter at the moment unless you want to employ yourself over there. Mm -hmm. um, so, so maybe that's, that's another solution. Mm -hmm. And what you mean unless I want to help build it? Yes. Maybe we could go over and get some extra work. What do we you think? have some nice, fine yellow helmets. We could moonlight. Okay. Do you know what <coughs> moonlight is means? Like being in the limelight? No, no. Moonlighting means working part time on another job than uh -huh. your regular job. Your regular job is ah, being a guide. So, so this is exactly what I am doing at the moment. Yeah, you're moonlighting now because <laughs> your regular job is guiding. Yes, a, a of guiding. course. I am a tour guide. ArturWarsoGuide.com. What is it? Crypto advertisement. Ar now say it again. Arthur? Arthur WarsoGuide.com. We have to put that in the credits. That's a good idea. I forgot to do that. And but so if we can imagine how much taller this building is going to be five times taller than it is right now, right? Let me take a look with my professional eye. At the moment it's about 70. 
I think it might slowly reach 80 meters. So it will be four times higher than at the moment. About four times higher yes. than it is right now. Yeah, which is going to be amazing. But uh, yeah, it's going to dwarf. It'll be like twice the size of the Marriott. It will be not twice, quite. Not quite. almost. It will be more uh, than twice of the CH8, the building with key that advertisement we were talking about on the before. Yeah. In the, in mm -hmm. just a so previous segment. twice as big as this one, plus yeah. 10 meters. Yeah. There you go. Plus 10 meters. Yeah. Wow. Okay. So that is pretty exciting stuff. Stay with us. For more of Poland Daily Travel, we are going now uh, for the next episode to a different part of Warsaw that is entirely built of, uh, of new skyscrapers, right? Yeah. And uh, we're going to see the Warsaw Spire. Oh, that is going to be very interesting. You place. love this part of town. I, I love yeah. this place. There is a very special yeah. block arranged for the inhabitants. Yeah. There was a very special permission given by the mayor. Looking forward to next episodes. Okay, good. Sounds good. Stay with us for the next exciting episode from the Warsaw Spire and that uh, different area of Warsaw just to the west of us. See you. It's Friday afternoon here, and uh, maybe we get a nice cocktail over there. I mean, Let's, or maybe some coffee. Or maybe a nice coffee over there. Yes. So Because we're still working. That's Just don't spill it. That's what you're saying. And I shouldn't spill it. Because mm -hmm. I'm famous for spilling my coffee yes, all over yes. myself. Well, uh, well, last time your jacket was fine. Yeah, OK. All right. Stay. <laughs> Why do I do this? <laughs> Stay with us. You do this. <laughs> That's what you do. Uh, watch the next exciting episode with me and Arthur from the it's Warsaw coming. Spire. Very nice one. Yeah. It's cast a long shadow. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Poland Daily Travel. And here we are again. It is Will and it is Arthur, and we are here in a very special place. We are still doing our tour of skyscrapers. You put on a, a wintry hat. I put on a hat. It's September. I did. This is not very optimistic. This is September, so it was like almost a hundred Fahrenheit, and now it's like almost nothing. Half that was Fahrenheit. just last week. <laughs> Man, yeah. I'm telling you, weather in Poland is like a lady changes her mind three times a day if you are lucky. Fickle. Fickle. Yeah. The fickle. So. Fickled. Fickle. Yeah. So you have to be. You have to just uh, go with the flow, I suppose, yeah? Okay. We are standing in an important place, though, are we not? We are standing in a very important place called the European Square. And the it was special, very ambitious, wasn't it? Very yeah. ambitious because it's a private property mm -hmm. of Gelamco Company, Okay. Belgium investor okay. who constructed the very building that's behind us and uh, thanks to special uh, consultations and agreement with the mayor of Warsaw over then Hanna Gronkiewicz Waltz this very place is open for the public so we can have very we have these very nice fountains in here we have trees during the winter people are ice skating in here beautiful Kocham oh, Warszawa they put up an ice skating rink yes oh, I didn't know that. Okay, so, okay so to go on there are yeah. these uh, um, uh, exhibitions that change every three months mm -hmm. we have two restaurants one is located in a building that's shaped like heart mm -hmm. and another one in a very big structure called Stig's Bar and Grill restaurant very good conferential place for the companies conference place conference place okay and uh, there are co live or concerts confidential no 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 the, Could the, be confidential. the, the previous one if please. you get a booth in if the back I gently I was no, if you the get a booth one. in the back in the corner in the dark okay be confidential okay yeah so conference place right uh, for the companies um, that are, for instance, located in this very building. The top floor, the top three floors are taken by Goldman Sachs, a very important investor, Samsung. Samsung says, OK, we put the main advertisement of, of the building. We lease a lot of space inside the building, but... Stop saying company names. Every <laughs> single equipment that's used by... Warsaw Spire building. Mm -hmm. You can say that. Must be installed by Samsung company, of Samsung company. Pat, so stop it. I have to bleep that out. It's like you said a curse word. Okay. Apologies. But that's <laughs> what they did. 
I'm, I'm just telling it's you. It's okay. It's okay. Tell story. That's history. That's, that's travel. Fine. And that's These what you're facts. here for. You're here to tell. Yes, people now, if know. I was, if I were traveling. Yes. Let's, uh, let's imagine for yes. a moment that I'm traveling to Warsaw, and I, and I wanted to see. I mean, why would I come here? You would come in here to see the modern Warsaw. You, you would like to come here to see the building that was given European Best Building Award. Sorry, it was World's Best Building Award. And uh, I confused that it building? with... building? Yes. 2017. Really? Co the Confer World's Co Best Building? Conference in yeah. um, uh, France, uh, Cannes. Uh -huh. And uh, for business development uh, awards, this one won the competition of 2017. For business building. I proudly say that because it's in a... I, I was born one mile away. You were born nearby? I here? was living half a mile away. You were born a poor black child, I was. I, <laughs> <laughs> I was born. Yeah. I, was, I was born and raised right in here. Mm -hmm. So when I got to know about the idea and when I saw that that's really happening, then for, for people of Warsaw, it's like a miracle. I mean, we are really, we feel that these are amazing moments for this city, its inhabitants, and for you as a traveler who comes in here, sees that and say, wow. Yeah, what I mean, a place. I, I've been to this uh, the restaurant at the Hilton, of course, many meetings with people there. Um, never, never stayed there, of course. But uh, I'm, I'm intrigued. What else do we have here? I'm intrigued by, the, by the, this building winning the award. I had no idea. No, See, don't. you can live in a city or spend a lot of time in a city mm -hmm. and still not know mm -hmm. about things like this. In fact, I've been here before, but I've never really stood here and taken in the august majesty mm -hmm. of the Warsaw Tower. It's splendorifous. Splendoriferous? Yes, Splendor I, I understand. I get it and I like it. Do you know what I mean? Yes. Am I exaggerating? Think? No. No, because it won a big award, so it must be a beautiful building. No, that's... I meant to say before, the other building we were talking about, the Varso Tower. Yes. Is that Varso, right? Varso Place. Place. The Varso Place is uh, designed by Norman Foster. And so team, many. His team. Mm -hmm. uh, and Norman Foster did the building by the opera mm -hmm. in, in, in Warsaw, didn't he? How many... Yes, next to Opera, the Metropolitan uh, right. building, which is in a sort of triangular shape. We have the Metropolitan building and the Cosmopolitan uh, building. The Cosmopolitan is another yeah. one. Right, that we talked uh, about. The residential 160 meters Skyscraper, yeah. high, yeah. exactly. Um, so, yeah, it's so beautiful that we can get confused with all these names of skyscrapers appearing in Warsaw. And you know what? The Galamco place. The Galamco? Galamco company, sorry that constructed this one. They are also constructing Skyliner on the other side of the street, which will be a part of Warsaw Hub Human Urban Business Development. They are yeah. also constructing Warsaw Spinnaker, and yeah. there is also Generation Park under construction right yeah. behind that building. So what a place. Warsaw's Manhattan, this is how my guests call it. Yeah, so it's like a Ronda, this is Ronda, European Sorry, European Park, right? Yes. And European over here is Square. Rondo Dashinskiego. And there is a Rondo Dashinskiego, yeah. where is also a metro, brand new metro station. Right, and all of these buildings are being uh, created around this area. Yes, right? including yeah. Hilton Hotel, Platinum yeah. Towers, uh, Wutska City Building, everything's in one block. Yeah. So, Splend, you were saying Splend, Splendiferous. Oh, that's exactly that's what that's I wanted what I to say. Splendiferous. Correct. Amazing. What, it's an amazing place here, uh, isn't it? Well, this is Poland Daily Travel. We're here at, in front of the Warsaw Spire. And you can see it if we look up right now. You can see it. 